friend. Oh, hey. You know, sometimes when you're spending a little extra time at home, uh, either being home from school or on the weekends, you think about what kinds of things could I do? Because I'm sure that every young person out there gets tired of watching television or playing video games. So let's talk a little bit about service today and what it means to put other people ahead of ourselves. You know, in the 4-H program, we promote service, we promote volunteerism, the whole idea of making sure that other people have opportunities because we provide those many of times for them. It's important that as 4-H members that, again, as I mentioned earlier, we put other people's needs ahead of ourselves, um, making sure that, that we think of others when we're engaged in all kinds of activities. Today, I want to talk to you about a project that's near and dear to my heart, and that's Operation Christmas Child. Many of you have heard of this project either at church or in your 4-H club, and perhaps if you're hanging out uh, in your house and looking for something fun to do, you can think about starting to pack a box. Now today we don't have a box here with us, but you can normally use a plastic shoe box like you would buy from a store, or um, just a plastic shoe box like your, your tennis shoes might come in. You could even order uh, for an additional cost some boxes through Operation Christmas Child that are pre-printed that you can use, but any of those will work. So for today, we're gonna to use a bag and get started with some of the things that go in this box. Well, first of all, I've had an opportunity to travel abroad and to deliver these boxes to children around the world. I've seen firsthand the excitement on the faces of young people and the, the joy that opening these boxes, a simple gift, if you will, bring to these young people. So as we think about a box, what you'll want to do first, and if you actually go on the Operation Christmas Child website, it goes through how to pack a box, suggestions and whatnot. First and foremost, it talks about a wow, a wow item. That could be a doll or a soccer ball. Um, whatever you might have that's a big item that, uh, we could, that uh, when a young person opens, that really gets their level of excitement going. It's also good to think about clothing. So for today, I've got a boy that I've, I've decided to pack for. That's the next thing you'll do is you'll decide whether you want a boy or a girl and what age range. And they range from two to four, five to nine, and 10 to 14. So you'll mark that on the label on your box. So we've got a pair of gloves. And some people say, well, Mr. Crow, how do you know it's going to a country where they need gloves? What if it's going to Africa where you know they may not need gloves year round? And my response is always, we give from the heart, and the gifts will always work themselves out. Perhaps the young person in Africa is responsible for carrying something that's heavy or wood or whatever the case might be into their village, and they need those gloves for protection. Same thing with a toboggan, um, keeping their head warm or covered, depending on where they might be. A pair of underwear, a pair of socks, uh, you know, I'm, I love bargains, and I love bargain shopping, and perhaps you can go online with your parents and see some discounts that are going on right now, some clearance deals, and uh, things you may not have in your home currently. Maybe you don't have clean uh, and new uh, items, but you could be thinking about where you might be able to find some, where you could maybe order some from online. Maybe you bought a pack of tennis balls recently, and you want to throw an extra tennis ball in here for a young person to play with. Perhaps you got a football for Christmas that you've never even opened or, or begun to play with and you want to think about, well, that might be a great gift for a shoebox. Perhaps your mom went after Christmas shopping and bought a little Christmas loofah. Now, I know it's purple and it's got a reindeer on it, but I promise you, for a young person who's never been given a gift, they're going to be excited about this. And along with this, a bar of soap. I'm sure that your parents keep extra bars of soap. Maybe your dad travels, your mom travels, and they have a little... Uh, miniature ones that come in the hotel, those are all great. Now, certainly we can't send liquids. So while you do want to send a toothbrush, no toothpaste. So if you have an extra toothbrush that's still in the package, great opportunity to put that in your shoebox. We can't send toothpaste. We can't send shampoo, anything that's going to uh, drip or leak. You know, um, everybody likes a cap, so I have this visor that we could put in here. Um, you'll want some coloring pages and some either colored pencils or crayons, and you can pick, again, depending on if it's a boy or a girl, a sports theme or whatever you might want. Stickers, again, I know we assume sometimes, well, you know, I'm a boy and I don't like stickers. Well, this may be the first gift that any young person's ever gotten, and maybe they'll share with a younger sister 
or a little brother who doesn't have. Think about that. Give from the heart. I promise you, every time when you give from the heart, these young people are going to be excited to open these gifts. A cup or a mug is always appreciated. Sometimes at stores you can find a discount or a clearance deal on uh, plastic forks. And I don't mean the cheap disposable forks, but I'm talking about like camping forks or something you might buy for a young person. Heavier duty plastic that you could put in there, for example, for them to eat their food with. We make a lot of assumptions. We assume that just because we have a warm home, just because we have um, plenty of food in the refrigerator, plenty of toys in our game room that everybody else does, and that's not true. Um, a backpack, a drawstring bag, you know, they could use this for school, they could use this to carry items into their village. Uh, there are so many uses. Um, when I traveled to South America, to Lima, Peru, I had an opportunity to see children um, that were so excited to get anything in their box. I remember a little boy that was 10 years old that got a little sock puppet and he was playing with it and showing it off to his friends. Someone else got a soccer ball and I know soccer balls can be expensive, but again, maybe you got one for your birthday that you have not even used yet. And you could ask your parents, hey, can we put that in the Operation Christmas Child shoe box? Now, if you do that, try to remember to get a pump. Uh, you can get sporting equipment pumps pretty, pretty inexpensively. There's places online you can order it or the next time you're out and about and have an opportunity to buy one, that'd be great too. And then I, as you walked in, you saw the letter that I was writing. Every letter, every box rather, should have a letter and a photo of the person that sent it. Uh, when we do things here on the UT campus, I have a group picture of all of our collegiate 4-H and FFA members and they all sign the letter. Why? Because for a young person, seeing many faces of people that maybe don't look like them, maybe they're from um, a foreign country where um, they want to see the rich diversity of your 4-H club or of your family. Have those photos. Have everybody in your family or your 4-H club sign that before you send it off. And think about the person on the other end who's going to receive that. I want to tell you a little story about this little girl. This little girl, to be quite honest with you, um, changed my life forever. Her name's Isabella. And I remember going to the village and I had a roll of stickers and they told me, they said, oh, Mr. Crow, every little child loves stickers. So I went and bought the jumbo pack, you know, 10,000 or whatever it was. And I had rolls of stickers and this little girl came up to me and she wanted some. So I gave her stickers. I turned around and there was a, there was a line of kids. They all wanted stickers. They were so excited. But I thought in that moment, I might make a connection with this little girl. So when I gave her her stickers, guess what she did? She turned around and she ran the other way. She was so excited. It broke my heart because why? Up to that point, I had made that about me. That experience was about me, not about that little girl and the, and the good that I could have done to help her. And I'll be honest with you, I was a little bummed out. I was sad. And you know, when it came time to actually give out the shoeboxes, she was in my line again. And I was so excited and thought I'd make a connection. Same thing. She got her box and she opened it and she was excited, paid no attention to me. Because up to that point, I had made that entire experience about what I was going to gain. Well, friends, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the chance we have to help other people. And if you're at home or uh, visiting with family and thinking about ways you can help others, think about Isabella. So to finish up our story and our video here, I remember vividly when we were getting ready to leave the village, they asked us for one group picture. And Isabella, you can see here, ran and jumped in my arms and would not let me go. And young people, I do not mind telling you, Isabella was the reason I cried myself to sleep that night. My mind could not comprehend what children in the developing world, what their lives must be like. We are so blessed to live in the United States of America. We have so many opportunities. Our lives are wonderful, wonderful compared to maybe even friends and neighbors across town, across our city, our country, or around the world. And we have a lot to be thankful for. So if you're sitting at home watching this, think about how you can help somebody else. Think about that shoebox. Start collecting those items and be ready to make the best better. Thanks, y'all.